and got in the car and I dropped her off and watched her walk into the um, home and that was the last time that we saw her. They have had cadaver dogs and ground penetrating radar on the property. But still no Clashindra. Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. So for today's case, we will be talking about Clisandra Hall, who disappeared on May 9th, 1994, after working at a doctor's home office after school. They gon' find you, catch you sleeping, ooh, 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 stay woke. Now, Clisandra Hall was born on March 30th, 1976. She was from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and she came from loving parents, Willie and Laurel Hall. She grew up with her brothers and was known to be very beautiful, smart, and ambitious. Her family gave her the nickname Clea for short, and throughout the video, I will be calling her Clea because that's what everyone called her. But while looking at her pictures while I was researching and things like that, I could not resist um, the hairstyles, the long acrylic, you know, nails and red lipstick. Like everything about who she was screamed the 90s, which was my favorite era. And she also went to Watson Chapel High School and she was on the honor roll, the marching band and also sang in the choir. Now, during the time of her disappearance, it was her last year of high school and she was preparing to give a speech on her graduation day. She had big plans on attending college at Tennessee State University to become a pediatrician because she absolutely adored children. She was so motivated that she already had a summer internship in Boston at a pediatrician office before she was going to go to college. Now during the weekend of May 6, 1994, Clea was pretty much getting ready to attend prom which she had an amazing time. She had her hair done, her nails done, she had her beautiful dress and on May 7th the next day she went to attend a sorority ball so that whole weekend she was pretty much spending time with family and friends and really just having a great time. But on May 9th this is when things turned completely left. On May 9th, which was on a Monday, things were pretty much back on track for her after experiencing such a busy weekend. She was on her way to school, you know, just a regular day for her. And after school, she had a job working for Dr. Larry Amel's home office, which wasn't too far from her house, literally a couple minutes away. Now, Dr. Amos, he lived with his wife and their child. He ran a nonprofit organization for an in-home daycare center. Pretty much, he helped fund and support grant money to different daycares. And Clea would look over the finances and the checks. She was just pretty much in charge of all the books. So Clea got a call from Dr. Amos around 5 p.m. to come in and start her shift. So around 8 p.m. that night, Clea called her mom to ask her if anyone called her. And her mom was like, no, but when are you coming home? So Clea said, I'll be home in a few. I just need to finish up some paperwork. And Clea never stayed past 10 o'clock. She always made sure that she was home before 10. And another reason why she even called her mom to ask her if she called was because around this time in the 90s, cell phones wasn't really a thing. So Clea made sure that she called from Dr. Amos' office to let her mom know, hey, I need you to pick me up or hey, I'll be home at this time. So her mom, Laurel, she let her know, okay, well, I'll be here waiting up for you. And she usually slept on the couch in the living room to wait up for um, Clea to make sure that she came home okay. Now it's about 12.30 at night, and when Willie told Laurel that Clea wasn't home, she immediately called Dr. Amos' house. And when she called, Dr. Amos actually picked up the phone the very first ring, which I thought was really weird, and she did as well. So Dr. Amos tells Laurel that he heard Clea leave the house around 8 p.m., and he saw her get into a car, but he technically didn't see who. He just heard her leave the house. Now her mom was supposed to pick her up, so Laurel felt like, okay, well that's weird, but she gave the situation the benefit of doubt. Clea always been responsible, so she felt like, okay, well, you know, she's about to graduate high school, maybe she's just being bold tonight. And pretty much just being a teenager. She probably went to see a friend, so she really tried not to worry. So after speaking with Dr. Amos, Laurel stayed up all night trying not to worry. 
But now the early hours came and there was still no sign of Clea. So her parents were like, okay, well, maybe she's already at school. And again, it's 1994. So her parents weren't able to really call her on a cell phone. That wasn't really like a big thing back then. So they just hoped that she was at school. Now her younger brother went to the same school as his sister. And when he didn't see Clea, he was worried. And he called his mom from school to let her know, hey, I don't see Clea. Something is very wrong. Now, Clea never missed school, so for her to not be there, Laurel knew something was very wrong, and she called the police. Now, this part is when things kind of annoyed me. So, um, Laurel, she ended up calling the Pine Bluff um, Police Department, and they tell her that she has to wait 24 hours to report um, Clea missing. So they can't take down the report because she just turned 18, but she's in high school still. So you would think that they would have moved with more urgency, but we know the truth when it comes to that. So while Laurel waited for them to report her daughter missing, she called all of Clea's friends and no one knew where she was. So on May 10th at 5 p.m., Laurel and Willie made their way down to the police station to talk to them and really just apply some pressure that look, you know, their daughter is missing. We need police on this right away. So while they're talking to police, Laurel stated that they seemed a bit uninterested about her missing. They were very nonchalant and they said maybe Clea left somewhere with some friends, but her parents knew if that was the case, Clea would have definitely reached out to her parents. She wouldn't have gone, you know, 24 hours without reaching out to her family. That wasn't her character. She didn't really move that way. So they decided to look for Clea on their own because police weren't moving with any type of urgency. They started a little search party and looked in wooded areas. They created flyers and was passing them out within the community. It just seemed like Clea literally just vanished. So it's been days and police now finally decided to help. They start to ask questions about her personal items in her room. If they found any clues or looked in her diary, they wanted to know Clea's dynamic with her family as well. Now, detectives knew that Clea worked at a part-time job with Dr. Amos the night she disappeared, so they went to visit him to ask him a few questions. And when they arrived, Dr. Amos left town the day Clea vanished. He had a business trip in Dallas to take care of and he wasn't in town, but his wife was home and she agreed to let the police in to talk and look around a bit. She told investigators that it was weird that Clea didn't say bye when she left because she normally would and they didn't see who Clea left with. So investigators took note and left the house, but they did make plans to come back once Dr. Amos came back into town because they really wanted to speak to him. So while investigators are really trying to just find some more information, they was told that Clea was interested in a boy at church that she had, you know, a little crush on. So police wanted to speak with him right away. So when they questioned him, he stated that he didn't know anything. They checked his car and they also put him under a polygraph test which he passed so they ruled him out as a suspect so on may 14th dr amos came back into town and he heard the news about clea missing but he also knew that people in the community thought he was involved because he literally left the next day after she disappeared and he looked very suspicious and i don't even blame people i mean I would look at him suspicious as well. So he decided to go to the police station himself to clear his name. He shared with investigators the same thing he told Clea's family. And for investigators, nothing really stood out to them that was a red flag. So investigators wanted to check his home office phone logs to see if, you know, any calls was made and if that can lead them into, you know, finding some more clues. And they did see a number that was pinned to a person named Smith. So Dr. Amos claimed that he didn't know a person named Smith at all, nor the phone number. So Dr. Amos left the station and on his way home, he saw Laurel talking to a neighbor outside of her home. And when he went up to Laurel to speak with her, he did let her know that he just finished speaking with the police and he's sorry about, you know, Clea. And he actually gave her the number in his phone that police were questioning about to Laurel to see if maybe Clea had called this person. But Laurel, she was kind of like, 
like, all right. She was, she was receptive to it, but she was also side eyeing him because she didn't know if she can trust him. I mean, look, my daughter disappeared when she was at your house. So she really didn't know how to feel about things, but she definitely felt like something happened at his house. But after the talk investigators had with Dr. Amos, they wanted to know if there was anybody else at the home office the day Kalia went missing. They found out that other workers were there, including Kalia's friend named Erica. Now, Erica told police that she left work around 8.35 p.m. and that Clea was still there. She said she offered her a ride home, but Clea told her that she'll walk home. It's fine. You know, I'll see you another day. Now, investigators weren't sure if Clea maybe just didn't want to take the ride with Erica or if she didn't want her to know someone was maybe picking her up. You know, they were just throwing out so many theories. Now, Laurel had told police that sometimes Clea would walk home by herself but her older brother would always meet her at the house to walk back home with her. Now the last time anyone saw Clea was at Dr. Amos home and investigators made it clear to the Hall family that it would take two weeks for them to really search the home for clues and evidence and when it was finally time to do the search it was kind of a waste of time because they couldn't find anything and if something happened to Clea in that home office Two weeks was plenty of time to clean up any type of evidence. Now, at first, investigators didn't think that something sinister happened to Clea in the home because Dr. Amos wife was there and other workers. But after a while, the police felt like maybe foul play was involved with Clea's disappearance. So after a while, the Hall family was very frustrated with investigators about why it took them so long to even do an in-depth search. Laurel felt like if they reacted sooner, they would have found maybe a sign of struggle there or would have found a press-on nail, some type of evidence to really help. But investigators' initial theory was that maybe Clea left the home with someone that she knew, and maybe they were responsible for her disappearance. Now, they never confirmed if Clea ever, you know, left and went into someone's car or left the home by foot. They just feel like if someone took her, then maybe she knew this person. Now, investigators did tell some media outlets and articles that they had a potential suspect, but never shared who they were to the family. Investigators did reach out to Dr. Amos again to take, you know, a polygraph test, but he refused to. So investigators never really applied pressure with Dr. Amos. But the Hall family felt different. They felt like something happened while she was there. And over the months, things began to really die down concerning Clea's case. And then it turned into years with no information about what happened to Clea. Her case turned cold. She wasn't able to graduate high school. She wasn't able to finish her internships or graduate college. This beautiful girl just vanished. But it won't be until 2012, 20 years since Clea disappeared, police received a new lead linked to Dr. Amos. When Clea first disappeared in the 90s, Dr. Amos was getting some construction work done at his house and one of the contract workers reached out to investigators to let them know that he saw some blood splatter on some of the installations in the home. And another worker said that while they worked on his home, they remembered a foul odor coming from the house. So police took this info and on March 29th, 2012, the day before Clea's 36th birthday, a search warrant was ordered and police collected several bags of evidence to look into. The Hall family felt like this can finally be the moment they find out the truth. But things fell short. An investigator on this case took the evidence bags that he received back to his home and claimed he was unable to drop it off to the crime lab and decided to keep it, you know, with him and wait until the morning to drop it off. But the evidence sat on the police shelf for a month until it was sent to Arkansas's crime lab. A crime tech said she forgot about the evidence because she was stacked with other cases. When the Hall family found this out, they were livid because they weren't sure if they were trying to cover things up. Was this a conspiracy? Did they know something and was and was preventing, you know, the truth to come out? They didn't know what to think. 
The police were so careless about Clea's case that that was the last lead investigators had and everything was back to square one again. The police were so careless about Clea's case and that was the last lead investigators ever had. Her family is still trying to search for Clea and they deserve the truth about what really happened. Someone knows something because people just don't disappear. They continue to celebrate her life every year for her birthday and try to keep her case alive as much as possible. But let me know what you think happened. Do you think Dr. Amos is responsible for Clea's disappearance? Do you think she left the house with someone that she knew? What do you guys think and feel, you know, happened? But let's go ahead and pray for peace and comfort for the Hall family because I can't even imagine what they're feeling. It's been about what, like 27 or 28 years and her case is pretty much cold and it's unsolved. And it's very unfortunate that they had to go through this and I definitely feel like, just my personal, opi my personal opinion, I feel like the police could have definitely did more on their end, you know? And there's so many cases where the killer is literally right in front of you. But sometimes when it comes, you know, to us, you know, black girls or black men or, you know, Hispanics and things like that, just minorities, our cases aren't dealt with much care and concern at all. We had such a bright and beautiful black girl wanting to do so much with her life and her family, I'm sure they still need love and prayer. So let's go ahead and do that for them. Father, Lord God, we come to you and we're praying for peace and comfort for the Hall family. We pray, Lord God, that you just reveal the truth because you can do all things. Even though this case has been, you know, cold for all of these years, you can still bring back the light into this case and the truth, Lord God. You know what happened. You know all things. And I'm just asking you, Lord God, to just, you know, reveal the truth for the family because right now they're still left in the dark and they don't know what happened to their child, their baby. So, Father, Lord God, I'm just praying for peace, love and comfort and especially healing, Lord, because I'm sure they're still grieving sometimes and you know some days it's hard harder than others and i don't take this platform lightly father lord god you created this platform for us to all come together to share the truth but also come together to just pray and ask you to open up doors that need to be open and put the right people back on this back on this case to reveal the truth in jesus name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. They gon' find you Catch you sleeping Ooh, stay woke Baby creep